you know, it, it's clear, obviously, from everything we know and the Lion Air report now that MCAS was a major factor that contributed. But, you know, Boeing's position, at least prior to these crashes, was uh, it was an autonomous system uh, and it operated in the background. That was, is that correct? Mr. Chairman, that was the design approach, yes. Yes. Um, so, but the question is, how do we get to that? And we have a, a slide, you'll be able to see it right in front of you, uh, staff. Uh, yes, this was a, a concept uh, design uh, for the flight deck in 2012, and as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, there was an MCAS uh, alert indicator. Uh, so at least at some point, uh, some on the engineering and design staff felt it would be important uh, to make the pilots aware of the system and to have uh, an indicator light. Uh, so. Uh, is that, do you agree that that was originally proposed? Congressman, uh, understand that was uh, part of an early uh, trade study at that point, and uh, very, uh, very common that early in the design stage we'd evaluate different flight mm -hmm. deck okay. alert systems. Thank you. So, uh, but obviously the final version did not have that. It, it did, that light was, I mean, there was no indication either in the manual or on the flight deck of the presence of MCAS. Con Congressman, I think John can uh, equip or answer that question. Yeah. Yes, Ch Chairman, uh, the MCAS uh, light, as you pointed out, uh, the intent of it was to signal an MCAS failure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important to note that in these accidents, the MCAS system did not fail. Right, it triggered. And, and but it the, would not have so, but lit the, up. But, but, but it the was functionality okay. of the MCAS light was actually the reason it was deleted was because the functionality was incorporated into the speed trim fail light, which right. you can see just adjacent to that. Right. The MCAS is a okay. extension Thank you. of the speed Thank trim you. System. Thank you for that. But um, when it was a relatively benign system, 0. 0.6 degrees, it was in the manual, and then when it went to repeated two and a half degrees, it came out of the manual. Is that correct? Um, I have seen very early versions of the manual that. Uh, indicate that you had uh, MCAS in the manual, your test pilot asked FAA to take it out, and it came out. Uh, uh, Congressman, if, if I could uh, try to clarify, because you're, you're asking uh, questions that span into a couple of areas, just if I could clarify. Well, So there yeah, was the, the intent, the, the MCAS inclusion in the training manual, uh, that was an iterative process that was occurring in parallel to the extension of MCAS to low speed operation, which I believe is what you're referring right. to. When, so the, the extension of MCAS to low speed operation, uh, that was done and flight tested from a period of a, around middle of 2016. Right. To yeah, we, we understand that and we understand some of the, the problems in the way it was tested and it wasn't tested with the AOA uh, failure, but that, that's, that's good for now. Um, the, a key assumption was uh, reaction time. And, um, you know, the, uh, with the AOA uh, failure, uh, the MCAS activates, um, and it's you know two and a half degrees every 10 seconds, pretty radical. Uh, and Boeing assumed it would take pilots four seconds uh, to recognize and react to runaway stabilizer. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, again, as we do uh, what we call hazard analysis mm -hmm. for the airplane design, uh, Four seconds was the, in was this the assumption. Case, that was the assumption. That's a okay. long-standing industry assumption for right. systems like this. Uh, Lion Air report says it took pilots eight seconds to react. Uh, and then we have information uh, provided to the committee by Boeing, which will now be the second slide. Uh, and it says uh, there a slow reaction time scenario, 10 seconds found the failure to be catastrophic. Do you think that was clearly, uh, was this document ever clearly communicated to the regulators that uh, a 10 second delay, which doesn't seem like a lot of time to me, particularly when you look at the NTSB report and the cacophony going on on the flight deck, and particularly in the case of Lion Air when they didn't even know the system existed. Uh, did, was, uh, was the FAA aware of this, uh, uh, this document? 
Chairman, I can't speak to this specific document. Okay. John, John may be able to, but I do think it's important to note that as part of the design process, we use a set of industry standard practices on these timelines. This is a common yeah, but, part of our hazard but, analysis. But, as, but, but that you, was shared. Right, with I, the I understand, and I understand process. what the industry standard was, but I mean, I mean, it does cause a little concern. 10 seconds, I mean, you can say, gee, really good pilots can do it in less than 10 seconds. Uh, pilots aren't, you know, at the top of their game every day, and particularly in the first iteration, at least, when they weren't even aware of the system. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, that's, uh, that assumption uh, should have rung some uh, alarm bells. Um, so, I mean, do you think, in retrospect, it was a mistake to not inform pilots of the existence of the MCAS system? Congressman, uh, a few things on that. Um, and agree, we made, some, uh, we made some mistakes on MCAS. And as we've, uh, as we've gone back and taken a look at this, uh, moving from a single sensor to a dual sensor feed is an important mm -hmm. part of that. Providing additional training information. All right. which, uh, the feedback we've gotten from the pilots, as you noted, is part of that. And then revisiting these, uh, these decades-long industry standards. I think you see a similar recommendation out of the right. Jader of course, report. Of course, the, the question would be why was it just originally wired to one sensor, which again, single point of failure, as uh, then acting administrator Elwell said in May, uh, a safety critical system that that's that's just not done, and you know the as the NTSB said, multiple alerts and indication can increase pilots' workload. The combination of the alerts and indications uh, did not trigger the accident pilots to immediately perform the runaway uh, stabilizer, uh, you know, uh, uh, functions. Okay, um, again, let's just. Mr. Hamilton, are you aware of any other aircraft out there that has a safety critical system that is dependent upon a uh, single point of failure? Chairman, uh, uh, single point of failures uh, are allowed in airplane design. Uh, regulation 25.1309 actually discusses that and talks about different hazard ca ha categories. And, and this, we, one would, this one was deemed to be catastrophic. I know there's three categories. You didn't deem it to be catastrophic, although in looking at the 10 second, you said it was catastrophic. It was classified as major, as I recall. Yeah, yeah catastrophic is, is one category. And so when we test out systems, we do look at uh, their impact on the airplane when there's failures. And we did look at uh, a 10 seconds, but we also then took it into the simulator with pilots, and, we, and the, the typical reaction time you, was four um, seconds. I put up another document. It's right in front of you there. Uh, and at 12-17-2015, I don't know if you're uh, aware of this, but uh, this was raised by one of uh, your engineers. Are we vulnerable to a single AOA sensor failure with the MCAS implementation, or is there some checking that occurs? What, were you, did you ever receive this communication, and did you respond to that engineer? Uh, Chairman, I did not actually receive this communication, but I am aware of the communication recently uh, as it surfaced. In talking with uh, the engineer, I think it it's highlights that our engineers do raise questions in an open culture. They question things, but it also followed our thorough process and was determined that the single sensor from a reliability and availability standpoint met the hazard category and the safety. Well, of course, we don't know what happened in Ethiopia, but there's some speculation and Bird sheared it off. They're pretty delicate little things out there, actually. I've seen them. Uh, and uh, now, of course, the uh, final slide here is uh, now, uh, as you emphasize, uh, flight control will now compare inputs from both AOA sensors. And I guess the question is, why wasn't it that way from day one? And Mr. Why Chairman. wasn't it that way from day one? If you can do it now with the, oh, an extra wire or a software fix or whatever, why didn't you do it from day one? Why not have that redundancy? Mr. Chairman, uh, we've, we've asked ourselves that same question over and over. And if, uh, if back then we knew everything that we know now, we would have made a different decision. The original concept from a safety standpoint was to uh, build the MCAS ex 
extend the current uh, speed trim system on the previous generation, the 737. Uh, that's a system that had about 200 million uh, safe flight hours on it. Mm -hmm. so one of our safety principles is to take safe systems and then incrementally extend them. That was the safety concept mm -hmm. behind okay. the original decision. All right. Well, thank we've you. We've learned my since then. Right. And, my, and that's why we've moved to this new design. Sure. My time has expired. And I want to turn to the ranking member. Ranking member, uh, Mr. Graves is recognized. <clears throat> Hard to know where to start. Um, and I want to go back to the just kind of for clarification to you that that first slide with the MCAS. 